of Tech Wizards. And today we have a very special surprise towards the end of my presentation. And I'm so excited for this. Uh, and we're going to present to you something that is essential to any trader that literally trades actively the market. Whether you're investing or swing trading or day trading, you will have to have this. You just have to have it or you just have to master it. Uh, today, I have prepared a very interesting topic, earning season for you. This is something that I love doing since my years in day trading stocks, and I continue to enjoy it very much on a very simplified manner, trading futures. It's actually much, much simpler than it actually, than it actually looks. Uh, today, I will be talking about exploiting earnings season for maximum gains, trading futures. So how exciting is that? Because obviously, there are no earnings in futures. But if you come to think about it, behind each, each index, we have a plethora of stocks that are reporting earnings, right? Almost every day or every week. It depends on the earnings season. Fast trades, awesome results. This is the topic of today's presentation. My name is Anka Metcalf, and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com, which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing, tra swing trade, and actively invest in the futures and the equities markets. I have been doing this successfully for the last uh, 19 years. I run a trading room, a futures trading room since 2017, and I run an active uh, swing trading service. It's called the Stock Swing Trader since 2010. This is how we actually debut with, with this service. We came, uh, we came and we uh, formed actually Trade Out Loud because I was sharing my trading ideas two years before Trade Out Loud came about. Uh, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. And uh, like I said, you know, one of the biggest uh, things in trading is to have really good education. So I think that it's, it is important that uh, you receive a really robust trading education. And I, what I'm trying to say is that I don't care where you're getting your education, but before you open a trading account, make sure that you do your due diligence and get very informed because you're either trading with or you, uh, you, you trade against some of the brightest minds in the industry. Uh, you we're talking about hedge fund managers. We're talking about institutional traders in general. And of course, algorithms, because algorithms form 87% of the market volume. I like to specialize because I've been trading for so long. I've been trying to find my niche in trading because I wanted to get the maximum result. I wanted to get maximum results in the least amount of time. I want instant trade gratification. So I want, I have specialized in high velocity moves and I have noticed that throughout the trading day, and this is specific for day trading, it doesn't apply to swing trading, you can take a swing trade anytime. But when I apply it to my income producing style of met, income producing style of trading, because uh, day trading is an income producing style of trading, you'll get in and out and have access to your cash at the end of the day. So for example, right now, if I have a trade and if I make $500, then I could go spend it at Costco, right? Uh, but if I'm, in, if I'm in a swing trade, and for example, if I bought Apple stock this morning, for example, for a trade, uh, and I hope that the price will go in my favor, let's say to the long side within uh, the next two, to tw uh, two, two days to, uh, to two weeks, even, or even more, depending on the market environment, my money is stuck into that account. So therefore, I don't have access to it. So I don't know about you guys, but I really love instant gratification. I just am all for instant gratification. I like to get paid for the amount of information that I have, for the experience that I have, for all, all the effort that I put it into trading. I'm also the designer of an institutional proprietary, proprietary trading system that is based on price support resistance. But I'm not just looking at supply and demand. I'm looking at more areas, not just only the supply and demand. I'm looking at all the areas that I can find on a technical chart with simple indicators that 
you can use and you already have that are free with any brokerage or through any platform. And I'm looking for confluence areas. Now, these areas will show me whether uh, or not my trade is lining up for a failure or for an 80% to 90% odds of succeeding. So that's the reason why I trade with maximum odds on our favor. 50-50 uh, doesn't cut it. 60-50, no. 70-50, no. I need to have at least 85, 95% of, uh, of the odds in my favor in order to get a trade. And I can teach you too how to generate an income in two hours or less and create your own wealth ecosystem because it's all about creating that ecosystem that will work for you and will make your money work for you. So what that means is that with these, the, this ecosystem, you will be able to generate an income and not only that, but you will be able to allocate a part of your income to a swing trading account or to an investing account where your money is going to work for you. You don't have to do a thing. All you have to do is take some trades, uh, play some uh, play, uh, play, play some trades, uh, let them trail, and that's pretty much it. So the effort on that side is minimum, 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 about 20 minutes per week. That's what all it takes. And that's divided by day, probably five or 10 minutes every single day. But that's the goal. And this is what trading is all about. So if you hear a strategy, if you hear, yeah, uh, if you hear, you know, anything about trading that, you know, sells you just one point, remember, there's so much more to trading than just day trading or just swing trading or just options trading. So you want to create that perfect ecosystem that will bring you to that financial independence in your life. Um, so if you want to learn more about Trade Allow, you can visit our website and our social media channels uh, below. Also, our handle is Trade Out Loud. As you can see, I have participated in so many uh, events with traders and for traders, and I'm very happy to be here and present for you. We have also been awarded uh, the best financial literacy tool for 2021. Uh, this award uh, came from Benzinga Fintech Awards. It is a global event. It's not just for the U.S. And there were over 400 companies that participated uh, for the best financial literacy tool. We're best in education and we're best in delivering the most fantastic results, proven results. I'm also the winner of two trading battles. If you have listened to Mandy last night, she talked about one of the battles that was last year, and she was actually in the jury of that battle. And uh, I have won two trading battles. The trading was live. It was for day trading. It was also, uh, we also had some swing trade ideas. It was with cryptos, it was with futures. So it was basically a lot, a combination of assets. And it was really fun. It was really, really fun. So today I have something different. And this is the kind of webinar that I like to present only one time every single quarter because it doesn't apply on a uh, week by week basis. So this is, again, a lot special, a lot, so much special than anything else that you, we have presented. So this is about how you two can generate a plan for the second quarter of 2022 now, and this for now for this earning season. So uh, I will show you how to predetermine entry stops and targets using technical analysis. And this is what it's all about. But how about finding that winning trade, right? Finding that trade that has the capacity to run regardless of the overall market condition, right? Because sometimes you have symmetry where all the indices, and I mean the NASDAQ, S&P, um, Russell, and Dow, you have times when they're moving in synchronicity. So that means that they're all moving uh, at the same pace. And there are times when they're heavily divergent. Take for instance, today in the market, you have you had a lot more relative weakness into NASDAQ, and we will talk about NASDAQ and what happened to NASDAQ. Uh, and uh, you had a lot of relative strength that came in from the Dow. So what are you going to trade, right? So the selection criteria is very, very interesting. 
So how to trade the stocks versus the uh, futures in minis and the best time to execute these earnings trades. All right, so let's uh, roll up our sleeves and let's get started. So why is, the best, why is now the best time to start to learn how to trade futures? And in general, the beginning of earn, beginning of earnings season is one of the most active seasons in um, in the market. Now, a very few traders know that this every earnings season is actually divided into two. There is the a very aggressive earnings season where most of the movers and shakers from the industries are reporting earnings. And then there is a latent phase. That second phase is where you don't have major players reporting earnings and therefore earnings season is winding down. The market is not going to react as much as in the beginning of earnings season. So in the first six weeks, so there are, we have the first six weeks and then we have this, uh, the second half of the quarter with the rest of the six weeks. Now, if you want to push the pedal to the metal and get into the zone and trade, these six weeks are going to be the most important ones, right? So we still have this week. This will represent the first week out of the six. And then we have uh, another five weeks from now where we're going to get a lot of activity into the market. So the second quarter has just started. Last week, we just had JP Morgan. We had uh, Wells Fargo and City Report earnings. This week, we have, again, a plethora of other stocks other than financials that are reporting. Uh, we have a lot of market moves into earnings season. We have velocity in the move. So that means that the price escapes either higher or lower. So that means easy follow through. I don't know about you guys, but when I get into a trade, I love to see that easy follow through. And then I want to trail my trade, place a trail and trail out of the trade and enjoy my profits. And of course, enjoy the rest of the day. Uh, and also you have the return of volatility because volatility fades out within the last three weeks uh, into the end of the quarter. And then you have really big price swings. So what does this mean? You have companies that are reporting earnings, good or bad. We don't care as day traders, right? We're not investors. This is not our IRA plan. This is not our 401k plan. So we don't really care about the direction. Uh, so we have these price actions that are easy pushed into targets. And that means that not only that we're getting instant gratification for our trades, but we're getting bigger profits, right? So everybody loves bigger profits. So if you, um, this is me right here, right in front of my trading computer, as you can see, uh, and uh, I trade futures. This is actually the, that was actually my layout. So why futures? First of all, you could take on a short position with these. You don't have the uptick rule like you have in the stock market. You have reliable volume, whether you're trading the overnight trading session or whether you're trading the New York trading session or even the London session. Uh, trading major markets because you are trading NASDAQ, you're trading the S&P 500, you're trading the Dow, you're trading Russell 2000. Plus, you're trading commodities, heavy commodities like gold. You're trading silver. You could trade platinum, palladium. You can trade, uh, for example, energies like uh, crude oil or heating oil or um, uh, Arbob gasoline. You can trade grains like corn, et cetera. You get the picture. So these are really big, big markets. And the beauty about it is that they're surrounding you every single day, right? You look at your desk, if it's made out of wood, guess what? Lumber, that's a commodity, right? You take a look at your computer as well. You know what? This is tech, right? So it's part of NASDAQ. So everywhere you learn, you're surrounded by commodities or indices, right? Or stocks or whatever it is. So um, the reason I love trading futures is because you can uh, trade it for income, like just like, like I said earlier, so you can get in and out within the same day, or you can create wealth you, through swing trading or even investing. There are many traders that hedge against the market uh, with futures. 
uh, you have different tick values and price ranges. And with these massive moves that are happening in the market, you're always going to get bigger, wider uh, parameters for your trades. And we're here to talk also about parameters, meaning the entries, the stops, uh, and the risk levels that you will be applying to your trade. Because what is the trade without having a really good measure trade, right? So you have different tick values and price ranges for that, whether you're using minis or micros uh, or full-size contracts. Uh, you don't need to use a scanner right? Because you only have very few things that you can trade. So you really don't need a scanner. You can just place them on separate charts on a win in a window on your platform and you're done. I mean, that's it. Um, and then you don't need any special indicators. So that means that you will be able to read price action correctly. So what that means is that uh, oftentimes you're seeing that for example, a stock or an index or whatever you're trading uh, may do a breakout, right? If you're an algorithm and if you're trading with an, uh, with an indicator, that indicator will get you in. But the human brain is wired to analyze all the parameters and all the context into the market. So in many cases, you may find that you may not want to take the first breakout, but you may want to take the retest. And this is where an algorithm is going to get you in. It's going to stop you out if that happens. But if you're putting your human touch and you look at the context of the market, you would not take the trade there. OK, so you would not take the trade there. You can see that the environment is changing a little bit. And even the strongest index or the strongest stock or the weakest index or the strongest stock is changing and it's shifting from its original message that it provided you. So indicators are um, what I'm trying to say is that uh, indicators may have. And this is the reality. I, I didn't say this. There was a study out there that delay your learning process. You're more focused on the little squiggly lines rather than you know entries, rather than exits, than reading price action. It will delay your learning process. I've been there. I've done that. I spun my wheels for about two years using indicators. Trust me when I tell you this, I was looking for the holy grail when I first started tra day trading. And uh, I would have done anything uh, that that could have provided me a good return based on day trading decisions, but it didn't. So it only lost me money. And I found out that, hey, it's not worth it because I wanted that perfect system that I don't have to be in front of the computer or even if I am, I don't have to do a lot of analysis. It doesn't work that way. But if you simplify your trading, just to look at essential elements of the trade, you will find that price action is so much better than any indicator on the planet. Uh, tax advantages are fantastic. For those of you that live in the US, that's great. Uh, for those that are living outside of the US, they are even better. So if you're in the UK, for example, those are uh, you have tremendous uh, uh, tax advantages if you're trading futures. So you can look into that yourself. Uh, one thing that I like about the futures market is that you don't have the pump and dumps. So with that is upgrades, downgrades, right? So, um, and you don't have that manipulation that is present every single day and every moment in the stock market. There is still manipulation though, don't get me wrong, but it's not as severe as it is in the stock market. And of course, one of the things that I love more is that there is the, the futures market is open close to 24 hours. So that means that you have hands-on risk, HOR, which is fantastic because opportunities don't wait for the market to open uh, in order to for you to take advantage. We have a proven performance, six-figure income per contract. You could, uh, you could actually go to our website. And if you go to tradeoutloud.com under the service tab, uh, services tab, you can click either on Futures Trading Room or the Stock Swing Trader. And if you scroll to the very bottom of the page, you will see the track performance per contract. So that means if you, you know, have no idea how to trade, you know, and if you only followed me, but that is followed me, right? And not do all your stuff, all the other stuff on your own, okay? Uh, but if you followed me, then these will be the results that you have achieved. And this is by one contract. You can imagine if you position size or if you have a, an account where you could take it two or three or four contracts, easily seven-figure contract. 
All right, so uh, uh, seven figures per contract. So um, we talked a little bit about this yesterday uh, when we talked about the futures, uh, the futures account. And one of the reasons many traders gravitate towards futures market is the relatively low startup cost. Because for example, it requires you about $30,000 to open a stock day trading account. And if you lose a penny, um, um, below 25,000, then your day trading status is out the door. So that's why you need to start with a little bit more. But in the futures market, you can open an account with as little as $5,000. Don't open an account with less than $5,000. I mean, it's up to you what, you what you truly do and say and want, uh, but you will not make money. That would be a fun account. It would be something that you can easily trash because you cannot make money. You cannot make money with a $2,000 account. It, you would just fool yourself. Um, and best of all, you don't have to maintain this amount because as long as you have sufficient cash in your account to cover the margin requirements, you could actually trade the commodity or the index because now you have access to the to micros and still have a balance of about $1,500 or $700 and still trade the commodity or the index that you have. So what makes the futures market tick? Mm -hmm. What makes the futures market tick? Why does the price move, especially um, overnight, for example? Well, overnight is trading based on extensions from the, um, the New York trading session and based on the sentiment that we've had in the New York trading session. Plus, it's moved by economic events that happen in the overnight. So the price action is actually put under pressure by the overnight trading activity of the stocks that are trading, for example, the ADRs. Uh, and everything, all the stocks that are trading overseas. And that's how that's how price action is getting impacted uh, overnight. But when the uh, New York trading session, before the New York trading session opens, we're having an infusion of economic releases that are coming for the New York trading session market. You have 830 numbers, whether it's non-farm employment role or whatever the number is, most of the data is coming in at 830. Uh, there is some data that is coming at 945. 945 is also a very important time in the market. If you're a day trader, you know what probably that is. Uh, and also 10 o'clock, right? And then we have uh, FOMC meetings that are happening once in a while. And they usually come in at two o'clock. And I think I think today we have we had Beige Book at two o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. So earnings first six weeks of every quarter are the busiest because they these uh, these are the most impactful releases that are coming from the uh, for the market. Uh, of course, news anything that is healthcare reform, tax reform, tariffs, anything that is coming out from Washington, national or international economic events, geopolitical events, elections, etc. Everything is uh, affecting price action. If there is something going on right now in um, I don't know, uh, Kenya, definitely it may or may not impact the market. It depends on the severity of uh, what's going on there. If there is anything happening, I don't know, in the U.S., definitely uh, this can impact the market. Uh, for example, it can produce a tape bomb. So if there's, I don't know, a gas leak, for example, in New York, and there is something that explodes in New York, uh, definitely there's going to be an investigation whether or not it's a terrorist threat, right? So you're going to see the market probably plunging because of that. So there are all sorts of things that are happening in the market, whether they're breaking news or fake news. These are likely to impact the market because the tape doesn't read whether it's uh, uh, real news or fake news. All right, let's talk a little bit about earnings going in depth a little bit. Uh, so companies earnings are released uh, before the market open and after the market closes, um, often causing substantial move in price in the underlying stock outside trading, uh, outside regular trading hours. Uh, the largest reaction typically occur when a company substantially exceeds or misses expectations, right? And we have a perfect example from last night. I guess you guys know what I'm uh, what I'm referring to, and that is Netflix that we're going to talk about in a few moments. Uh, having uh, access to extended hours trading will allow the futures trader to react very quickly for in this bad news and definitely participate in the initial reaction uh, to positive or negative news for the underlying stock. So as you guys, as you guys saw, what happened is when uh, Netflix came out and reported earnings, guess what happened to NASDAQ? it moved lower. And not only that, but NASDAQ is one of the weakest indices and continues to have relative weakness. And it was the first one to react to the downside. 
So for example, you can capture very big moves in NASDAQ from earning reports that are coming from Amazon, Google, Netflix, Apple, Facebook, uh, Boeing, et cetera, right? Uh, so how do you create the framework, right? So how, how do you trade this? I mean, I know, and it sounds a little bit confusing now, right? Because you're basically watching stocks, but trading futures. Well, here's how it works, okay? This is the framework. You look at your economic calendar and you look what earnings you have upcoming. So for example, I'm gonna take these two, right? Because we have Netflix and IBM. Um, I'm going to set these aside for a little bit because we're going to be talking about those. But for example, today, right? So today being Wednesday, after the close today, guess what happens? Tesla's going to report earnings. So likely we're going to get a reaction again in NASDAQ, right? So what else do we have on the calendar? Well, not a lot of companies, not a lot of these companies that will influence earnings, uh, but definitely look for stocks that are Google, Amazon, Facebook, Twitter. These are the ones that are going to be the big movers and shakers. But for today, we have selected Netflix and IBM. And actually, this is the game plan that I made. Guess when? Last night. I didn't come out with the plan this morning because I'm having this calendar of um, economic uh, this this calendar of earnings right in front of me for the whole week so i have this and i look and i circle the earnings that i would like to trade so for example today we had netflix and ibm if you're a very aggressive trader you look for the earnings results into netflix and you take them into direction of the netflix earnings right they miss then you're going to go short nasdaq uh, if ibm has positive earnings you're going to go long ibm it's that simple so for example, this is the overnight trading activity. So the gray highlighted area represents the overnight trading activity. The white highlighted area represents the uh, your trading session activity. And this is the band that the segment that I trade. And I only trade, for example, an hour, an hour and a half, maximum two hours. If I don't have any trades by 1130 or 1115, I don't want to trade for the rest of the day. I leave my computer on just in case there's something going on, but mostly I'm done. I don't take a lot of trades because uh, in futures, you still have commissions. And even if they're very low, I don't want to incur unnecessary commissions into my account. And definitely, I don't want to risk any penny that is not worth spending into the market. I only go for trades that have really high odds. So for example, in this trade, obviously, Netflix was a big miss. Very, uh, It was very disappointing. And in the trading room today, I mentioned that I have two interests. First of all, I like the Dow because it's stronger and because IBM has reported earnings last night. And it's very strong. And I would like to take that to the long side. But at the same time, I was noticing support in Netflix. And in fact, I send it to my stock swing traders. Uh, I send the levels to my stock swing traders. And I mentioned that it'll be very interesting to see how the price action will react elsewhere around the 220 area. OK, so this is exactly where the price stabilized in Netflix. And I said that based on the decline that we had in, uh, in NASDAQ, because we didn't have a setup to short right off to the New York trading session here, we were waiting for a counter trade. So this is something that I looked at. We actually looked at the two minute time frame and we correlated. So uh, in the trading room, we actually had charts of Netflix and we had chart of NASDAQ. And I said, when Netflix is going to start turning around, and it's going to start ticking to the upside. This is the moment when NASDAQ is going to reverse. Now, the trade was very aggressive in NASDAQ. Some traders took it in the room, but I highly recommend that, that traders that were very new to trading or traders that are not consistently successful or have, have not taken the power income futures trading course that I teach to sit on the sidelines and wait for the second trade to pop up because we were watching the Dow for long. The trade worked and it went right into target into NASDAQ. And as you can see, it was in perfect synchronicity. So you were watching it side by side. And this is exactly how you watch and how you trade, uh, how you trade even counter trends or you trade with, uh, with the trend, depending on how the trade lines up. Then we have the other example of IBM. So IBM reported earnings. The earnings just send the price higher. So I assume good earnings, right? Okay, so uh, as you can see, we had, this is when the market opened. You see these two bars, here they are. Uh, the chart is a micro copy. This IBM is literally a carbon copy of YM, if you can see it. So we had two bars to the upside, two bars to the upside here. We had a pause, we had a pause here, and then we had a three bar pullback. We had two bar pullback here. We have the rotation 
we have the rotation and look, pull back, pull back, pull back, same here, pull back, pull back. So the chart is a carbon copy in a YWM. If you know how to correlate and how to trade this earning season, it's so easy. We were done yesterday in less than 20 minutes trading. Today we were done, I don't know, maybe it was like an hour and we were done uh, because we kept on looking at the market. I, you know, answer some questions in the room because the end result is that we want to get a couple of thousand bucks, be done and go on with our life, right? We don't want to be stuck in front of the computer. Economic events, right? So the market is not only influenced by earnings, right? And by companies' earnings reports, but it is also moving based on the economic events, right? So economic uh, indicators are main, are actually the main driver of price action throughout the entire quarterly, uh, throughout the entire quarter or ed quarter um, in the pre-market trading session. So majority of economic data is being issued at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. So that's an hour before the New York trading session open. Market reaction to the data can be used, uh, can, can cause actually substantial price moves and uh, set the trading tone for the entire day because that is the biggest influencer of the day. Now, you should know that I do not trade any kind of news events and we just trade the reaction from the news. And in fact, if the news report is coming at a 30, we're waiting for the market to open. Uh, you do not need to see or interpret the numbers. So I could care less what the numbers are. For example, when I'm trading and I'm in the trading room, I look at price action. Uh, even at a 30, I look at price action. I don't look at the actual numbers. I don't need to. I don't care what the numbers are because the market has its way of calibrating and also interpreting the numbers. So it will be reflected in price action. So why would I care what the numbers are? Same with the numbers that are coming in at 945 or the numbers that are coming in at 10 o'clock. I could care less what the numbers are. I wait for the news release. I don't get into the trade ahead of the num uh, ahead of any kind of number. And then I wait for the three waves that are happening. And then I assess the trade and take the trade if I feel that there's a really good high uh, chance that I may make I make money I may make money in that trade. Uh, companies like Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, they're also called the bank, can bring great potential to your portfolio and buckle up because we're just starting earning season and they are very expensive to trade, right? Um, talking about Amazon or Google, right? Netflix is down into the 200 plus, but still Amazon and Google, they're very pricey, right? So Amity NASDAQ 100 futures um, out trade all the FANG stocks combined by a wide margin. Yeah, that's right. You heard it right. So this is documented that Amity NASDAQ 100 futures out of all, out all trades in the FANG. So NASDAQ 100 is the great way to access top tech, the top tech market opportunities. Capital efficiency of futures can translate to significant savings. You can take advantage of nearly literally 24 hour market access because guess what? When the, uh, when the earnings release, is, when the earnings release is out, right? They usually report at 415, 430, five o'clock, sometimes even at six o'clock. You don't have the stock market, so you cannot day trade it at that time, right? Because it's closed. You cannot day trade it. But guess what? You could trade futures. You could day trade futures. And not only that, but if the companies report before the market opens, you can still trade the reaction from this news and get ahead of everybody else, all the, uh, all the stock traders that are out there. So sink your fangs into the mini NASDAQ 100 futures. And also you could do the same for the Dow. You could trade earnings from Boeing, from UNH, from, um, you know, even Apple is influencing, right? Because it is a component of the Dow. So there are IBM, obviously. So there are so many stocks. Obviously, obviously there are 30 stocks under Dow that you can take advantage of. And earnings season has just started. So it's an easy way to take advantage of it. It's cost effective. And I absolutely love it. Very few traders know you can trade stocks via futures and actually take full advantage of the big price swings. And these are not the only stocks because the reality is, is that when you look at these lists, these are the watch list under each index. So on the right hand, um, on, on, on the very left hand side, you have the Dow, you have the S&P 500, you have NASDAQ, you have Russell. Think about it. There are 30 stocks under the Dow, 
500 under the M and S and P. You have uh, 100 under Nasdaq, and you have 2,000 under Russell. So you have a lot of material to select from and trade. So sync your Dow stocks, for example, to the M and Dow, right? And this is exactly how you trade it. And then you pick relative strength or relative weakness. You can select them by the net change. And definitely you can find out what stock is uh, performing and what stock is not performing. And this is actually a great trading idea. And I do it every single day for my trading to select and do a little bit of a scan ahead of the market open to see where you're at and where the stocks are more likely going to open. So how do I exploit earnings season? Well, uh, think about this. You can use simple charting like this to select some of the largest companies uh, in the stock market. Uh, that are about to release their reporting. So for example, like Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, Tesla, you can see these big players in the market, NVIDIA, Disney, Home Depot. These are just CVX, um, um, uh, BRKB, for example. These are big stocks, even Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley. These are really big stocks that will impact price action into the index that it belongs to. So checklist, how do you trade earnings via futures, right? Number one, you have to select your earnings right before the market opens and after the market closes and historical time to uh, release their report. So you have to know when they're coming out. Also, trace your levels and plan your trade. So you have to make sure that you know where your interest levels are, because if the algos are going to hit to the upside or to the downside, you want to make sure that you have the right price where you get in, get out, and of course, uh, where you're going to be placing your stop, and if you have enough re uh, risk world ratio to get it into the target, and that would make it worth take the trade. And then, of course, you trade and watch NASDAQ of NASDAQ stocks report, etc., or the Dow stocks reports. You're going to be watching those. Trade, watch YM, for example, if Dow reports and SP. If you have more financials or energy stocks that are reporting, then definitely that would be a watch, the SP. So what is the best time to execute the trades? Well, you can you can actually trade before the market opens or after the market opens. You can trade after the market closes or after the company's report, right? Um, open and how to, well, once the price, once the, once the market is open, then you have to focus on your game plan and you pretty much, you have selected, uh, everything that you need to trade and all you have to do is execute. So your trade at that point is on autopilot. So today, when the market opened at 930, I already had my plan. I knew that, uh, based on, uh, based on NASDAQ results, if we're going to have a sell set up. In NASDAQ, we're going to go short NASDAQ, but if we have uh, if we have divergent market, then I will wait uh, and I will have to see how the mini s and and the Dow are going to digest the big loss uh, in Netflix and obviously the big pullback that we had in NASDAQ and then calibrate. And then if we would hold a confluence levels, then I would go long the Dow. So why the Dow? Because Dow had relative strength today compared to all the other market indices. So some of you may say like, why don't you just trade the MNE SP just like the rest of us? No, I don't because I have too much information and I know too much. So when I get into a trade, I want to get the maximum juice out of it. So I'm not going to be happy taking a trade that has not, does not have a lot of room to run, right? I want to select the winners and or I want to select the fastest movers. That's what a trading is all about because I want my trade fast into target. So it's stress free. I don't want to stay under pressure while I'm in trade. Not that I'm under pressure, but I you don't want that feeling, right? You want to go in, profit, out, done. And we're doing that more than 87% for our trades because our win ratio is over 87%. That's my win ratio. So how to prepare? You need to know when certain stocks of interest report and have good understanding of prior existing earnings behavior of the correlated stock that you will be trading via the corresponding index. On number two, you need to determine the key levels, right? So I always talk about level, level, levels. You need to determine the key levels. And then of course, you need to plot your trade. What's your entry? What's your stop? What's your target? What kind of management you're gonna be applying for the trade? How are you gonna position size? So these are all questions that definitely are up to you. These are some other examples from past years when Netflix reported earnings. For example, take a look at this. Earn Netflix results through the roof. What do you think NASDAQ is doing? 
going into the same direction. Uh, more examples, for example, here, Netflix, bad earnings. See, this is a different date. Um, so we had bad earnings. What do you think NASDAQ did? It followed through. So wouldn't it be helpful if you actually look at the trade and say, hey, these are very quick trades, by the way. These are very quick day trades because you're trading the momentum into these. So as you could see here, for example, you could have, um, let's see here if I can do this. Okay. All right. So for example, here we have uh, we have this support, we have this resistance, right? So we have this. We like this level because it's into a prior area of support, right? So you have a prior area of support here. And actually this creates minor support for, minor, I'm sorry, minor resistance for current price action. Why? Because prior support translates into resistance. So this support right here that you guys see is going to create a lot of resistance for price. So at this point, you have your stop area right here, and then you have your entry area right here below. So what you can do, you can basically short it at the, uh, at the breakdown level and let it follow through. And this is exactly what Netflix did here as well, okay? It's, it's not bringing the whole market, John. It's bringing NASDAQ. I have been talking about this for 30 minutes. So it's about the index under the stock. It's the momentum reaction that we're having, okay? So it's not the whole market, okay? All right, so, um, okay. So when it comes to institutional money, institutional money is what is pushing the market around, right? So it's about those algos that are hitting and firing. It's about all these institutional uh, investors uh, or, uh, sellers, right? Buyers or sellers. So in this case, now pay very close attention because there are stocks like Google, Amazon, Netflix. Uh, they usually report at the same time in the same day. That's why you have them here. And I always trade them after the market. They usually report after the market close, closes. And I always trade them, always trade them. Most of the time they're in sync. Most of the time, and I mean 95% of the time, they're in sync. So if Google has good earnings, Amazon will have pretty much similar earnings than Microsoft most of the time. So what do you think my game plan is going to be? Am I going to trade the mini S&P just like uh, all the 99.99% .99 of the retail traders that have $2,000 in their account? No, I'm not. I'm going to be selective uh, because I know how to trade stocks. I know how this plan works and how this game works. So I'm going to display a screen with the earning stocks, right? So I have Google, I have Amazon, I have Microsoft. All I do is I wait. Be while I wait for earnings to uh, come out, right? So about 10 to 15 minutes before I lay out my game plan and I set up my levels and not just support resistance levels, but setups, confluence levels, et cetera, because I wanna know where the targets are. I wanna know exactly where the measure move would be uh, for that implied uh, earnings. Uh, so I wanna do all my homework so I know exactly when the trade hits, because this is gonna be a really fast trade or it can be a longer time trade. Sometimes I keep it overnight. So in this example in NASDAQ, I kept it the whole night, whole night long. So my entry was just below 6,100. And this was a long time ago. Uh, and uh, for example, these are just some examples to show you how it works over time because it works every time and every year and every quarter. And that's why I present to you different dates. I showed you from today, I showed you from a year ago, showed you from a couple of years ago. So this is the type of trade that you keep on holding in the overnight. And all you have to do is just trail it all the way up. Okay, so chart correlation. Chart correlation is very important as well, because remember I was talking about synchronicity and I was talking about divergency. So for example, here we have Walmart that had good earnings, right? And um, this is also an earnings report and the stock went up. So for example, YM went up, but then we had Apple, John, right? Pay attention. So Apple correlated with Nasdaq. So now the whole market is not taking the S&P and Russell and it's not taking the Dow down. It's not taking the whole market, it's taking the sector down. So these are momentum moves. And as you can see, there's a strict correlation and a synchronicity that is un incredible, 
right? That is incredible. So you have down, 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 you have down, 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 rotation, take a look at the time, take a look at the time, 10 o'clock reversal time in case you don't know what 10 o'clock is. And if you're wanting to short go long into the uh, into 10 o'clock based on the prior move that you had from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, you should know that if you're a day trader. So uh, this, this is what you're getting in the market. So this is, as you can see, the same day, the same day and the same, um, um, the, the, the same minutes. It's actually to the minute. So you have an index that is up, right? Because it went up and that, I'm sorry, here. Okay, this is this is the cor corresponding day. You see this dotted vertical line. This is the current day. So you have this index that went up, shallow pullback, and this screamed higher. This you're getting downwards, right? So there's a very strict correlation. You may need to know a little bit more about technical analysis if you do this, right? Because you need to gain confidence and you need to know a little bit more about these correlations. But this is actually fairly simple once you know how to day trade. So what to look for, okay? Number one, you look for the trend, right? And you determine your directional bias. But at the same time, you look for a possible counter trend and then you establish the ESTR, right? The entry to stop the target and position. Uh, then you look for support resistance areas, right? These are support resistance areas that are confluenced from all time frames, not just on one time frame. You look at multiple time frames. Uh, all time frames needs to be in sync. So, for example, if the daily is uh, showing you that it's a sell pattern, that you're getting a sell setup or a breakdown or any kind of strategy, you're not going to take it long on smaller time frames. You plot the trade with the STR. Uh, try to determine the entry based on the chart time frame that is providing you with the most information. So, for example, if you are using a five minute chart and you have garbage because there's just too much noise on that chart, then you want to zoom out to a larger time frame like a 15 minute, for example, or a 30 minute. Then you define your entry based on your strategy, what kind of strategy. And remember, we talked yesterday about a trading plan, how important it is to have a trading plan and don't have that trading plan, for example, in your drawer, right? Have it right in front of you because you need to respect that plan. I had the trading plan on my desk for, desk for four and a half years before I put it back in the drawer because I didn't need it. I was wired for it. So I developed my stereotype and finding trades and knowing what to look for, how to trail, how to position size and how to do all that. Uh, then you place your stop, you wait for the trigger and uh, have a trailing uh, method ready to apply. It's very important to know your trailing method. You don't have a trailing method. You need to learn how to trail. Um, and knowing all this uh, will offer you peace of mind in the sense that you have planned an exquisite trade. You have all, you have hit all the corners uh, into the trade, right? Um, all right. So, um, so this is a chart from, uh, this is a chart from today. Uh, but before, before I bring that, uh, I want to go through something else. Okay. So some advantages to trading futures, right? You don't need a big account. You don't need that $25,000. You can start with 5,000 and trade very small and trade the same size, uh, lower commissions. You got tax advantages. You take a short position with these. You have really good volume. Now, how many trades do you trade per day? That's a really good point. Three, four trades per day, max, max. And I mean, if you have a scalpable market, then you allow yourself to trade about three to four trades. If you have a trending market, then two trades. Because if you have a trending market and you're taking more than one, two trades, you're doing it wrong. It means that you're stopping out or trailing too tight. So there's a problem with your trading stop. Uh, with a small account, uh, with a small account, and typically if you have a, an account, for example, of $20,000 or $40,000, you don't risk more than $200 or $400 uh, per trade. Uh, best time to take a trade, for example, um, 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock maybe. So why three to four trades a day? Because for each trade, you're going to need three bullets, right? So if you're using $200 on each trade, uh, if you lose on six trades, you're $600, $600 down. The reward should always be at least two or three times your risk. 
Um, in shopping markets, it's okay if you have just two, but to make sure that the tradable void allows you to have that. So that's not something wishful because I wish that I could make 50 million Rs in a trade, but that's not the case because the market doesn't really listen to me. The market thinks I'm nobody. So uh, the market has its own mind and the market needs to respect strict parameters and it has certain inflection points that it needs to drive into or drive a uh, pull back into. So the charts need to support your risk reward level. They have to be present on the technical charts. These areas of confluence need to be there and you need to take the trade into that area. So why the same amount? You're going to ask me, why do I need to use the same risk amount? And then we're going to get into the topic of today where I have a special guest invited. So why do I need to risk the same amount? Let's say you risk $300 on a trade, right? So you take the first trade, you lose 300. You uh, take the second trade, you lose another uh, 300. And then if you're an uneducated trader, you go all crazy right now. This is the moment of crazy, crazy, cray, cray. Everybody goes cray, cray. They either chicken out and they take the trade with probably a hundred dollar risk because they go like, um, the first trade didn't work out. The second trade really didn't work out. Oh, you know what? I don't have much confidence, but I still want to take the trade. I'm going to try it out with a hundred dollars. I mean, who decides to do that? You know, like you, like you either respect Wall Street rules or you don't. Nobody gives you the right to say that. Nobody gives you the right to use a hundred dollars just because you feel like it. And nobody gives you the right because I have encountered traders and I have traders come to me and say, oh, but I took the trade. I took this, you know, I respected the uh, $500 on a trade. And then I wanted to get my all my money back in the second trade. So uh, I went all in and risked a thousand dollars and obviously they lost it. Right. So don't risk too much. Don't risk too less. You risk the same amount on every single trade. So once the third trade, if you risk the same amount, 300, you're out. 300, you're out. So you lose on the first two trades. Then you have the third trade where you basically have the opportunity based on the risk to reward ratio, based on your calculus that you have done, that you can achieve target. What it happens if you achieve your target with three R's into that trade? Not only that you have recuperated your first two losses, but you're coming ahead. You will never get out of a hole if you're using one by one one risk. So let's say you're, you're risking one point to make one point. I mean, go get a job. All <laughs> right. So analyze overnight, overnight trading price action is very important before you start uh, your trading session. You have uh, developing the overnight. So you have to make sure that you take into consideration the overnight trading sentiment before you get into the newer trading session. Uh, no one has a crystal ball and what seems certain one moment can change in the next. And our job as traders is to just identify trades. That's it. Our job is every single day is not to come in front of the market and say, oh, I'm just popping up my computer. I'm just going to have to make money today. No, your obligation as a trader is to find that perfect setup and that perfect trade and money will follow. So trading is a very serious business. Hardest thing that you will ever do, not think. Uh, it's not a hobby and it's not entertainment, but it's a lifestyle because you can trade anywhere with an internet connection. You cannot learn how to trade from a DVD for a book. You have to have the life experience to trade it for someone that has been trading a while from the market. You need a mentor that is there for you every single moment of the day when you need help with. Uh, when you take a trade, think about this. Who are you trading with or against? Uh, if you want to be successful, you need to live and breathe trading at least in, a couple of, in the first couple of years. And you have to dedicate your time to learning how it's done. It requires dedication, patience, effort, and of course, passion, because without that, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, and it's not a get rich quick scheme. Uh, the Power Income Futures Trading course will start uh, next week. Uh, we teach a class every week. Um, it, we teach an institutional grade trading system. Uh, we trade stress-free. We have institutional levels by 
sell zones, management. We're going to learn, we're, you're going to learn everything. So basically we teach you everything from candlesticks all the way to management and sophisticated strategies and useful strategies and simple strategies. So you're going to have everything laid out from A to Z. You won't need another book or mentor or anything in your life. We teach you is the complete trading package is the ultimate trading package. But if you're too broke to invest in yourself, get used to staying that way. And that's a reality. Now we have the right tools um, that you can use to fast track your trading. Okay, so we have, uh, first of all, we provide you with trading education and with live assisted uh, trading. So I'm going to be trading with you. Uh, I, in fact, I'll teach you how to trade and I'll teach you how to make money. Not only that, I'm teaching you how to make money, but I'm telling you exactly where to get in, exactly where to place your entry, your stop, exactly where you need to get out, whether you have a small account or a big account. I don't know if there are many traders that do that. In fact, I do not even know one that is doing that. But I do this because when I started day trading, this is something that I wanted and I never got. So I created what I really wanted. But there is something you need to do before. Uh, there's not. There's something that you need to do in order to be successful. And that is position size. And this is all up to you because I'm providing you with the education, the system and everything. But you need to know how to position size, right? So why, why is position sizing uh, important? Well, first of all, position sizing is how many contracts you're going to trade the trades with, right? It determines how many contracts, because you could have a $50,000 account and say, oh my God, I don't know. well, how many contracts am I going to get, right? Uh, position sizing is not randomly chosen. So you have to be, you have to know exactly how the traders were going to, uh, how the trade is going to work out. It allows you to use the same risk amount on each and every single trade, just as the example that I showed you before. Position sizing is different for each trader based on the account size and risk tolerance, right? Because you could have a, a $5 million account, but you're very new to trading. So you're not going to be risking 1% per trade or 2% per trade, right? At, which is the norm. Uh, but you can, you can allocate, for example, a chosen amount that is comfortable to you. Uh, also, if, you're, if you have a small account that you have to stick to 1% or 2% max. This is a trade, for example, from today. So I drew this uh, section of the chart. This is a two minute chart. This is a trade that we executed today in the, uh, in the trading room. So for example, for this example purpose, I have the entry at 25.020, which was exactly our entry. Uh, we have the stop under this pivot at uh, 34.945. So we have, what have we have determined here? The entry and the stop. Now the, the risk level, right? The risk level is actually the entry minus the stop. This is how much we're risking in point size. So the difference between uh, 35,020 and uh, 34,945 is 75 points. So if I multiply that times five, because that is the um, uh, price of, per, uh, that is the price per tick per point in the Dow, that gives me $375. So if I would risk, for example, I'm giving you an example. If I, if my risk level is $200 a day, can I take this trade with $200? The answer is no, bold, no. But you can use micros. You could take eight micros and you could still make it happen for you. So you would be into that position size. Um, for example, uh, the uh, target area, we selected the target area into the 35,160. It was into this frothy top. So we felt that the trade is going to go into this top before it turns around. So that is the tradable void that we were looking at in case of the trade continuous higher because the, the trade could have weakened and could have filled the gap, right? But we went with maximum odds. We had a dotted line level here that you guys can see. Right. So the risk, the, uh, the reward level, the reward for this trade was actually to ours. So, for example, if you have a thousand dollars that you're risking per trade on this trade, right, how many contracts would you get it with? How many contracts would you get it with? If one contract is three hundred seventy five dollars, you could take it with two contracts or be a little bit below that thousand dollars or you could take it with three contracts, which maxes out just a little bit above your maximum your maximum level. All right, so if you guys are interested in the class, I'm gonna bring out my guests very quickly. Remember, we're gonna teach you to become that six or seven figure income trader in 2022, and I'm gonna help you get there because you are definitely not gonna get there without having the help that I provide every single day. 
Uh, so if you're interested, we do have a course that is upcoming and uh, here it is. It, here it is. It's the Power Income Futures Day Trading Course. It starts Monday and it's a five day, uh, five day class. It's live. We are still running the Easter bonus. Uh, three months access to the trading room, which is a thousand dollar value. So not only that you're taking the class, but you're actually going to make money for free for three months while you're still, uh, you're earning while you're still earning, uh, learning. And then you're going to get 12 mentoring sessions uh, as well. Remember, you're going to learn from the best voted in the industry. So who is ready to learn, earn, and join me on this amazing journey. The power is in your hands. It's up to you to change your life towards financial freedom and trade only a few minutes a day, literally, okay? So now guys, I have a special presentation for you. Uh, Hugo, I'm gonna stop sharing my slide. Okay. Okay, um, all right. So just so you guys know, Hugo is a Trade Out Loud member. And he has developed an amazing tool that is going to skyrocket your consistency into trading. It's called a position size tool. And this is what he's going to present. Uh, you can take it away. I'm going to be here. If you guys have any questions or if uh, you want me to, to be on the mic, I'll jump in. Okay, well, welcome. Thank you very much, Aka, for the presentation. And uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this, my name is Hugo, and let me tell you a little about myself. I'm living in Mexico. I started programming at nine years old. And through the years, I developed multiple computer and software programs. And I started trading futures like one and a half year ago. And as a programmer, but a beginner trader, I was motivated to develop tools that helps me out with the trade. So that's why I, I programmed this, this tool. So uh, as you uh, know now, position sizing, well, it's the, I think it's the best kept secret in trading because um, when I started trading, I didn't know about position sizing. I was like Anka just said, I just trade whatever. And of course I got inconsistent rules, inconsistent results. And when I started learning with Anka, I realized that I need to raise the same amount on every trade to be consistent. So that's where I learned that position sizing is the key to be consistent. But calculate the position is time consuming and it's stressful because well, you are doing this under pressure, under trade, trade pressure, because sometimes the trades are coming very fast and you need to be ready for it. So this is why I developed this tool. So uh, let's see uh, how is position sizing um, in the long hand. So first of all, you do your market analysis, um, then you decide what is going to be your risk that uh, you do before uh, start trading. Then, you, uh, then when you are going to enter a trade, you need to determine the trade stop, uh, the entry, or uh, you need to calculate the risk by, based on the market. So you have this formula that has you calculate the positions. And then you need to de determine if the risk to reward ratio is, um, is worth it to enter the trade. Then you need to set the trade entry, the stop and targets on your platform, execute the trade, of course, with the number of contracts you have calculated. So you need to select how, how many contracts, and then you need to manage your stop. So uh, all of the points that are on the square, on the blue square, you do that under pressure. So that's why I developed the tool because the tool, what it does is just uh, do all of those things. The position side tools, uh, it takes care of all of those tasks for you. So let me show you a demo of the tool. First, uh, let me show you the settings. The settings you need to put on the tool is 
What, how, how is the amount in dollars you want to risk every trade? Then you can select your profit ratio. So you can select uh, half of the size, one size, double the size, or uh, whatever it makes sense for you. And then uh, you, ha you have this uh, um, option to uh, don't move your stop. This is not going to let you move the stop uh, to take more risk. So it's like help people like me that sometimes uh, move the stop. So let me show you a demo here. So this is, a, this is for Ninja Trader 8. Uh, maybe, this is, maybe this is not going to look very well, but you will have, um, I will send you the web, website on the, where you can see this. So let me explain. So here we start drawing this rectangle, this blue rectangle, because this blue rectangle, rectangle will determine, determine my entry and my stop. So I'm going to draw the rectangle from here to here. So once I, I do that, uh, you can see here in, the, in this box, uh, we have the info of this trade. So we have uh, that uh, we are risking $300 per trade. So we can enter with six positions. And uh, it tell me how much is the, the trade, the risk of this trade, and how much is the risk per position. Also, it informs me the ticks and how it's going to uh, divide the, the targets. So now I, I will do that. I see my trade. I can click this button, the, the long button. And the strategy will show my targets, my, pot my potential targets according my settings. So here is the, and then if I want to enter the trade, I hit this button, the trade button, and you can see that uh, the strategy puts my position, six positions, and I just need to wait for my trade. So now it enters the trade. And this is, uh, I'm moving my stop here. I can move my stop up. Now here at the, at this um, top left corner, I have this um, info box that is, give, is telling me my live risk and my lock profit. So if I move my, my stop, I, I going to, the live risk is going to be updated. Look. This is 225, 285. So this way I can see how much I'm risking. Also, you can see here that I can move my stop down, but I can move my profits. I can, I can move my profits up. So let's let, let me run this a little faster. So now I just take my, my first profit and I'm going to move my stop up. And now I can see in the box that I just like risking five five dollars. And let me let me return here. I'm only like risking five dollars, and I I haven't locked any profit because I my stop is right on the on the entry. Now I move my stop a little, and you can see I lock the profit. So this is very good to uh, when you are trailing because you know how much you already have in your in your trail in your position. So well, this is it. I, I I'm going to show you here. Let me see. Hey, uh, Hugo, I'm sorry. Oh. I gotta I gotta cut you off. We're we're out see. of time. <laughs> tell me, tell me. Okay. Uh, okay, so I just want to tell you guys you. if you're interested, yeah, if you guys are interested, uh, you could go to the tradeala.com for slash position size 